<laughs> oh, so it's, I think it's exactly the time. So I'll, I'll, I'll start my presentation, start my talk. Okay. So it is. Uh, so we're all um, gathered here today to, to talk about mastering financial success and digital product development. And this event will be hosted by me, Yaroslav. And um, one crucial way to master the financial success of a digital product is um, calculating and understanding a unit economy, uh, which, which will be the subject of today's talk. And I will go into uh, a bit more detail uh, on how to calculate this thing called unit economy. What are the metrics you should use uh, to calculate it, how to interpret them and um, how to understand them, what do they mean? and uh, give you a little example and we'll uh, talk and discuss it a bit afterwards. So a um, couple things about me. I started as an academia as a researcher in biotech and bioinformatics. Then I switched into industry. I was in data analytics and product manager management and user research. I worked in game dev companies, live streaming, ad tech, and web hosting, mostly cloud hosting, and both as product manager as an, as well as data analyst. So I know this uh, problem of a unit economy from a data perspective and as well as from manager's perspective. So uh, and currently I work as a product manager at a company called WebPros. Uh, so, outline of today's talk will be as such. So, we will um, introduce ourselves to a, such a definition of a unit economy, what it is, what does it mean, how it's calculated, especially what metrics should you, we use in unit economy, how to track them, and most importantly, why do we track uh, such uh, particular metrics and not the others. Uh, we go for a real life a unit economy example, which is spoiler alert will be quite simple and like mid uh, mid school level math, and it's not not going to be hard. And then we conclude our talk, sum it up, and uh, follow up with some with, with some take home message. Um, so, what is uh, a unit economy? I would like to start, uh, first of all, with uh, economics 101, sort of, I called it like how all, almost all uh, businesses work. You have your users, whether it's B2C, like app, game, streaming service, e-commerce, etc., and leads they call in B2B if you work with other businesses, not, uh, not users. So you got some business model here, uh, and then you <laughs> you have the money if you're successful, and you convert your users or leads into money with with some uh, conversion, like with some percentage of your users. Uh, you you input you you convert it to your money. So not all of them, but hopefully as much as possible. And um, so yeah it's all about the unit economics it's it's a me it's a measure it's a it's a metric in itself which says you whether you're successful at what you do or not and uh, um, i would like to use the probably simplest definition possible it's it's it goes as follows is whether you make or lose money on each unit you uh serve or sell to or uh whatever depending on your business model and um it would it is very important to take into account the spending on user acquisition uh, there is a metric called cpa so cost per acquisition 
it's how much you spend on acquiring a user, not necessarily a customer or a paying customer, but a user just to acquire it. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's very important to make this distinction and also uh, to track how much revenue is this user or unit generating and um, whether you need to optimize that or uh, do some other manipulation with it. And here we always have to mention that it is better used not just the revenue, but a uh, metric called contribution margin, which is uh, uh, the formula is on the slide. Like you have this unit revenue minus unit variable cost. So you actually know what the margin is on your revenue of the, on the user that you acquired. Um, but this all, I understand it all sounds rather complicated. So instead we could use the, some of you may know this metric is called LTV, which is lifetime value. It's the value that user brings to business during the user life cycle inside our service, like inside the app or anything else. And also here, when we talk about LTV, we call it CPA, we call it CAC, which is customer acquisition cost, which is a metric might sound similar to CPA, but not. And we will talk about it a bit later. We have to keep in mind this golden rule, I call it, that LTV must be, must to be like two or three or four times more uh, that the customer acquisition cost, because if you're like, if you just the 1% or 2% or 0.1% make uh, your LTV is one, two, or one point percent uh, more than your CAC, you will not uh, be successful because there are a lot of costs, hidden costs, which you have to uh, take into account, not just the uh, slight difference um oh so but now let's take a bit more uh complex definition so use a formula for a profit so the main uh, metric to track for to into business could be profit so it's, it's actually how much money you take you may you, you put into your pocket and it's usually consists of um uh, user acquisition about it's is the amount of acquired users in cohort uh, so the the cohort is um time divided it's a division of your users divided usually by time or uh, like by day or by week or by month in which they uh in which you acquired them or which they joined your service or your your app for example and the of course, uh, they mentioned uh, CPA, the cost of acquiring one user. You have to very carefully track this metric to stay profitable, to stay afloat. And the RPU, which is every, uh, okay, there's a mistake. This is average re revenue per user in a cohort and uh, the profit actually. So the, the money we make from cohort of users, excluding the expenses to acquire them. And uh, now we're going to talk about uh, metrics in user unit economy um, in, in, in a bit more detail, not necessarily metrics we use to calculate the unit economy directly, but uh, the metrics we should be aware of, we should keep track of because they uh, directly or indirectly can influence our service uh, success and therefore our uh, <laughs> unit uh, economy as well. So like uh, the more metrics to the God of metrics, I would say. So uh, again, we go into the very basic formula like profit equals revenue minus costs. And um, our revenue and our costs can be described and expressed through a multitude of metrics, many different ways. And 
uh, you should be aware of the best uh, metrics and methods that suits uh, for your particular case because depending on your business model depending on your user base their uh, behavior their spending patterns etc those uh, calculations and uh, methods can vary very differently like um so yeah let's dive in those metrics uh, to correctly understand and interpret them and apply them to calculation of a unit economy and the first first and uh, one of the most important metrics of any digital product is retention so basically what retention means is the percentage of users which used your service on the nth day of their installing or registering uh yeah so basically we would like to track uh, the first day retention the seventh day and uh, 28th day so roughly uh, because um those are three key um uh, time periods i would say which in which you have to be aware of your user retention so let's dive into a bit more detail like for example uh, the first day retention is it's crucial when you want to optimize when you want to measure and understand the first interaction of a user with your service because uh, if your first day retention is very low like lower than your industry average like for example you run um, a game like uh, very popular match three games when you have to uh, swap the figures and to uh, to make them disappear like Candy Crush maybe like every every everyone uh, played the Candy Crush at some point in their life so if the uh, if you have a game like this and you have a very low first day retention uh, it, it means that your um, onboarding or your signing up or your registration or the first uh, like the flow for your uh, new users might be broken and if it's rather good uh, then you're uh, making some, something right and you maybe have to divert your attention to next milestone which is a seventh day retention it's it means it's usually uh, tracked in B2C apps. And if your seven day retention, good or bad, you can understand whether um, user had found some value in your service and uh, came back to, to have more, to play more, to see some live streams, to buy something, to, to, to do whatever. And the... Um, Again, if those numbers, if those retention numbers are very low or you have, like, they are unsatisfactory, you might wanna uh, dive in into what comes, uh, what happens to the users after they register uh, in your service and what goes wrong. Maybe, maybe you're not engaging them with them right, or they um, don't know what to do next after they registered and tried out your product and they just lost they, they 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 don't know what the next steps are so you have to keep in mind or at least think or to to test some hypothesis on whether something is going wrong and the 28th day retention is usually the metric which shows you whether um, your users have found some uh, long-standing value of your product and uh, needless to say that um, from first to 28th day retention, it's going to drop anyway. Like it is going to be lower and lower and lower. And um, but again, if we're talking about this 28th day retention metric, you want to um, understand like what keeps it, it will show you whether um, something keeps user for a long time in your um, in your service and if its metric is very low that they might again 
from the previous step they <laughs> they found some intermediate value but uh, then you have no mechanisms or no no way to uh, retain them to to keep them interested to keep them engaged maybe you need to work on some notifications email uh, campaigns to re uh, to um, to make them interested again in your service so that's pretty much it about retention and also also if you uh, we need to mention here um, a special kind of retention which is called rolling retention it's calculated a bit differently it, it, and it's used for a services like such as i don't know sky scanner which are designed to be to be used somewhat rarely you don't buy your airline tickets every week uh, usually usually you don't and then uh, you use rolling retention which is a metric uh, like uh, calculate a bit differently but i will go into detail afterwards if, if need be just just to keep in mind that it exists but it, it used somewhat rarely and the uh probably second most important metric about uh, after monetary metrics like revenue and profit is conversion and it's sometimes called c1 or just c or something like this an important note here is um it's a user to user metric so you don't uh, calculate or measure your conversion like user to uh, to purchase user to play game you uh, measure it as a user who uh, installed your app and user who played your uh, your game and user who bought something like you measuring exactly users to users not uh, like users to purchases etc so um to get your funnel correct and um obviously when we're talking about unit economy we uh, love and cherish the conversions to paying user so uh, we would in this context we will be talking as conversion as c1 as a conversion from a user who installed or logged in or registered into the user who paid us something because that's <laughs> that is uh, by far the most important conversion metrics there is and um what's conversion rate uh, can usually show us and this is the uh definition i would like to use that is not used very widely is uh, that conversion is the metric mm, which tell us how many users do we lose on each step like it is when we have a conversion um met like we have a conversion rate of three percent we usually like to think oh okay all right then it means that three percent of our users buy or buy our stuff or play our game but it's much more useful to think that 97 percent of our users didn't buy our stuff or didn't play our game they installed it they opened it but did not do the thing we wanted them to to do and uh when we thinking about conversion in the terms of the users who, which we lost uh it opened us to uh, really really big uh, growth opportunities because <laughs> obviously when we see uh a situation when we lose 97 percent of our users we have much to expand to and uh, of course uh it shows how well the feature flow in your service uh is designed like whether your registration flow is working correctly or there is there are some bumps that user encounters like for example you do not have the popular options that you usually have now like um register or continue with the google id apple id um, 
I don't know, GitHub ID, usually for developers, it's GitHub ID or something like this, Facebook ID. Um, and this is can uh, significantly drop your conversions into registrations and then to these key uh, actions that we want our users to do. And also very important thing that uh, it is sh it's showing us that it's user experience mechanisms. It's one thing that you design your service and think that users going to do this and in, in that fashion but the conversions on different steps of the funnel can show you whether this matches with the user's reality because if you think that you've designed a wonderful onboarding screen and then you see that you lose m m most of your users on the screen that it means that the reality is that that your design is not really good or uh, something wrong with this screen or with this page and you have to rework it or uh, diverge, divert your attention to, to there. And um, also it is important to uh, keep in mind that conversions, not obviously into registrations or installations, but to say purchases and some uh, other uh, some other activities in your service it's better be separated uh in two groups like old users and new users because uh old users had seen your previous iterations and uh, they might just be um like they uh, they haven't seen it before they confused and that's why and that's why they uh, having problems with this particular usage scenario and your new users, they haven't seen the previous version and it, would, it, it might be okay for them. And usually when you separate the conversions into purchases, into some other stuff on new and old users, you have uh, very different numbers, which can uh, be different by, uh, like, by, by like a fault, like 1% and 2% and something like this but by several zeros um so that's that's about it on conversion and um churn rate it's the uh, opposite some people say it's opposite of retention but it is basically outflow users from your service and it's it's rather simple you you want to make it as less as possible because uh, you, you you can't make it zero because even the best apps best services they lose users or they lose um, money like you have the churn of the subscriptions etc not only users um they they lose the uh users the uh, anyway but um important thing is to track um why you use them so like um maybe did research a bit more like at, at what say like uh which um, cohorts of users you tend to churn more it's whether they spend too much time on your app or they for example if it's a game it's whether your users lose too much they lose too much uh in games and they churn because they think your game is stupid and it's too difficult too difficult for them to play and they just drop it and then maybe you can optimize their game settings uh, to make them more engaged or it's it is because they spend too much or too little and you want them uh, you might interest them uh you might retain them by offering them discounts or some free in-game currencies like crystals etc to re-engage them with your service and also um one thing is important when we're talking about churn it's to separate churn into somewhat uh, similar groups which is Classical churn, which says on the slide here that users that are never going back to your service, like they dead to you. 
if they are, let's say, for uh, they inactive for a three months, I get, I guess that you consider them as lost forever. And uh, lapsed users, which is inactive, but might come back because they just maybe tired. They, they want to use your service, but they tired. They, mm, let's say, solved all the puzzles in your puzzle game and have nothing to uh, to play with. And you might um, interest them by introducing new levels, or if it's uh, e-commerce, you might interest them with the discounts or new collections or something. And it goes as follows: the first of all, first your user laps lapses, and then it churns. And there is some room for improvement to you, uh, whether. Like you can optimize uh, and to to try to do some to apply some mechanics of user retention on the lapse stage, and whether you when the user your users are churned, you can and if they come back for, in your service for some reason, you can treat them as sort of new users because they they left your service a relatively long time ago. And the another very popular uh, metric I mentioned is LTV or lifetime value. The definition it's pretty simple. So it's the profitability, the monetary value of a user during their uh, usage of our service in particular cohort. And again, I'm mentioning the cohorts because it's, um, it's it's a very good very useful uh, method of separating your users into her batches well, like chronological batches but this can uh, tell you a, a lot when you analyze your users by cohorts and the formula goes as follows like ltv equals gross profit uh, times lifetime where lifetime should be put into quotes and lifetime it's a particular uh time period in your service which can which you can observe empirically for example it's three two four five months uh, depending on your analytics depending uh, you find it through data analytics or through some industry standards if you know people who are in the same business and they can maybe let you in on a little secret and um uh, but LTV, like lifetime value, could be relatively hard to calculate correctly because we cannot really know. You sometimes we cannot really know like what, what is the actual lifetime of a user, or it is uh, difficult to predict and to calculate like in the first several weeks or months or days of the user of the of the user's usage of your service but uh, it can be somewhat reliably replaced with uh, a gross profit from like first second or third month depending on your business model and serve as a good estimator and you can use it in uh, calculation of your unit economy uh, be one common mistake or let's say misconception is it is better not to use revenue because it does not account for cost of goods sold. Basically, it doesn't account for the amount of money you spend to acquire those revenues. And if you uh, take them into account, sometimes uh, it can affect your lifetime value very significantly. And um, another thing is uh, when calculate lifetime value, uh, don't subtract, subtract like don't minus the team costs as they usually do not grow proportionally to sales volume because like if your uh, sales in your app in your game for example, I like to use the game example here a lot for some reason because probably it's, it's it's one of the easiest apps to monetize 
uh, like if your uh, um, sales increase twofold, your team costs don't usually. So it's better to leave these for, for this calculation. It's better to leave the team costs out. Like, for example, you can include the here uh, the commission of a particular uh, app store or uh, cost of servers. Because if your user base has grown two times, you have twice the load, etc. Um, mm, next, very important metric in itself, it's first purchase or the purchase amount in total. Because um, many of the services, uh, and, and you as a product manager, as a data analyst, you should be uh, hugely concerned with the uh, tracking and researching your purchase and activity. And here is why. Because tracking first purchases, it, it is really crucial, especially if your product is B2C, and especially if your product is B2C and freemium, such as pretty much any user app. Like you have a live streaming app, such as, I don't know, TikTok, for example, or you have a mobile game, or you have a um, Uber Eats, for example, like e-commerce that uh, you use. And uh, the moment, the um, like the time of the first purchase, the amount of the first purchase can uh, give you great insights into uh, your user's activity, their behavior, and how to optimize, like uh, whether you can give them a huge discount on this first purchase to engage them more. And, uh, or it's like, if you, 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 for example, if you have a problem with registration, you can uh, give them, I don't know, an opportunity to make a first purchase without even registering in your service. You, you can also like, imagine scenarios like this. And the, of course, uh, the important uh, indicator of a first purchase activity is uh, it's the health status of your monetization flow. Because if you have a problem with users' first purchase, it means your uh, monetization flow is broken. Somewhere is there is a problem when your users <laughs> having troubles with, with buying something even the first time. So it needless to say, they will have the same problem second, third time, etc. cetera. And um, this is a, a very good place to attend your, uh, to, to give your attention to, because it's basically the source of your money. You, because in in many freemium or B2C apps, it's, um, it's a good, uh, like it's a good, uh, uh, well, it's widely known that if you convert uh, your user to a first purchase, then it's way, way easier to convert them to second, third, and the following purchase. Uh, and increase their lifetime value significantly. And um, also, uh, yeah, that, 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 that's pretty much it for this. And the another uh, derivative metric of a purchasing activity is called DAP or DAP or daily active purchasers. Because again, um, if you have a pretty standard like pretty consistent uh, amount of your daily active purchasers separated into various geographics, payment systems, uh, platforms like whether Android, iOS, web, etc. And uh, you measure and display them correctly if this metric goes up significantly or goes down or fluctuates, it, it can also lead you to it, in, it, it can alert you, first of all, because obviously you um, <laughs> you need to monitor that uh, and you can and this metric can show you whether you have problems on a particular set of platform and payment system and take appropriate action. Maybe like maybe your uh, next version of your app had some critical bugs uh, associated with the monetization and 
you're losing money in real time and have to warn and scream to dev team to <laughs> and beg them to fix it as as soon as possible for example and the of course the other king of all monetary metrics uh, it's revenue again <laughs> very simple all the money we earn from our business from our purchases but as simple as it sounds uh revenue can and should be i would say heavily segmented and very closely monitored like here is the uh some uh, segments that are usually very useful to to use when you calculate and you display revenue whether whether for yourself as a product manager or a data analyst and especially if you prepare some dashboards or reports to your seniors like c-level execs or senior management or what have you so obviously as i mentioned here already several times it's the platform because um, like web uh, ios and android are obviously the three uh, main pillars of the modern <laughs> digital activity and as you probably know that we have um if you read the reports from the industry and some some other data you know that usually ios users apple iphone users ipad users they are more keen on spending and they slightly or sometimes not slightly sometimes significantly like to spend significantly more than android users simply because of the cost of the devices and like you have um, not very many different iPhones and you have a multitude of different Androids which are greatly vary in price, in characteristics, etc. Therefore, much wider audience with much wider spending habits and spending capabilities. And the, for example, the, the web version of your app, like for example, in some services that I used to work for, like some companies, we have the um, um, all three major platforms, like we had iOS, Android and web, and most of our traffic and most of our small spending, like small purchases came from Android, like some of our uh, best, like say middle quality of of our purchases came from iOS and uh, the smallest traffic possible, but the insanely huge purchases, like when on Android and iOS, it was like two, one, two, three, four, five dollars. Like for iOS, it was slightly bigger, 15, I don't know, 20, it, et cetera, somewhere in the realm of that. But from the web, we have uh, what you called whales. Like we had people who spend from web, like, one two three five sometimes even i guess i can remember one time purchase over thirty thousand dollars you might ask why is that the answer is quite simple on ios and android you have the commission of an app store usually especially with ios maybe some of you uh, heard about the ongoing battle between the game company called Epic Games, I think, and uh, the ones who made the Fortnite and uh, Fortnite, the favorite game of the Zoomers and uh, the Apple that because because of the this commission that they take on each purchase that the uh, players make in in Fortnite. And in, in, in our case, in the company I used to work for, um, we build uh, on the web we, be, we build the payment infrastructure ourselves so we charge the lowest commission possible and therefore our biggest spenders while they were watching live streams and interact with uh, with each other and with the other users with our streamers from ios they were making the big biggest purchases possible from web and that in naturally um, uh, affected the way we monitor and um, evaluate the um, each platform in terms of revenue, in terms of revenue monitoring. And 
next big thing, which uh, which I partly already mentioned, is the payment system, which is um, even more, I think, complicated now because we have um, very, very good um, expenditure in crypto space. Like, for example, you usually um, split uh, your revenue by bank card, by GPay, Alipay, crypto or Alipay. I just use as an example as a payment system um, w which is widely used in southeast asia like in, in china and the neighboring countries or they do have their analogs just i i, I don't want to make this slide very long but just to keep in mind and those payment systems they are uh, of course differ in commission they differ in the time they, they differ in inconvenience first of all because uh, in GPay or Google Pay or, or Apple Pay, you have the most convenient user flow, I think, now for, for your payment because you basically in Apple you can pay with your face or in Google you just uh, put your phone to your face and bam, you, you got the um, your payment sorted. But uh, when you use it, when you're encouraged as a product manager, as a business owner when you encourage the users to <laughs> pay you through those systems apple or google pay you get way less money and this obviously will affect your um business uh, businesses unit economy um and the uh, i think the last uh, big segment which is ne which need to, which revenue needs to be segmented to is the country because obviously you have um, like I uh, you have the United States of America, which is big, which is rich, and you have uh, countries like USA is a very populous country, for example, but you have uh, countries such as India or Bangladesh or China um, or Thailand, which is relatively like China is, is very popular populous and India is very populous but the people there are way less economically active in terms of that they can they purchase in power is way lower and um, you always need to monitor your uh, revenue activity by country because sometimes your costs on uh, supplying some country with your traffic with your data with the services can cannot be matched by the revenue you're getting so it's it's always important to to take into account where your money did came from in, in geographical sense of course and uh, yeah another metrics related to revenue is rpu and rppu which is average revenue per user and average revenue per paying user the, they oh, these two metrics are may seem uh somewhat uh similar but they obviously not because <laughs> in the first case which in the first case we just measure the revenue divided by all the users and in terms of paying users it's paying users so it it, it is quite obvious but those metrics are very useful for evaluation your uh, using base and especially your paying user base because um, it it can serve as a good estimate of of a profitability of a particular user segment by age again demographic platform or particular digital marketing campaign which you acquire them from and therefore you can th this can lead you to decisions whether on to increase marketing spending for example or not to or completely shut down particular paid traffic campaign mm. and also it can lead you into an insight about the prices of your uh, price policy of your service and whether you need to change it because for example if your um, average revenue their pain user is dropping it means that those users that are willing to pay they somehow are not satisfied or like you you're hurting your uh, paying user base because again uh, going to a freemium model you have usually 
like three to five percent of your users are only three to five percent of your users are paying you the rest is there for free and if you're um, noticing that your average revenue per paying user is dropping that means that your pain ba pain base is somewhat dissatisfies but for example uh if you um discover a marketing channel with the i don't know very cheap but let's say low quality low revenue leads and you're significantly increase your user base with the um like with a very cheap cheap and styles but they spent but they didn't spend much and um, for example your rpu would go down slightly but in in uh, your overall revenue would grow because you brought way more users who paid less but on in the bulk they made a huge profit and they made a huge revenue and you made a huge profit from them so that's that's about rpu and rppu and also there is a derivative metric which is um rpu x which is like um those revenues divided by uh monthly or weekly or daily active users uh which can also indicate on uh, the quality of uh, um uh, let's say uh, the acquired users, whether and give you insight on whether how to monetize them correctly. So maybe they not good on the day one, but on the day seven, on the end of day thirty, they can they can uh, get to know your service a bit more and bring you a little bit more money. And also there is a an average price or the average check they say and um also very useful method to track because again as as with the daily active purchases you want to um, track how much orders or purchases you have daily weekly monthly or i don't know even yearly if you have a very long um for like forecasting um uh, opportunity and also the average price and average check uh, have to don't have to uh, go up or go down without you knowing why and of course the average payment count also have to stay somewhat stable unless you plan to increase it significantly because again if those metrics uh, drops first of all if they drop um significantly and i don't know overnight on over an hour you can probably indicate that the next the, the last rollout of your app version or uh of, or the next update of your web service might broken some oh, payment flow or payment uh, gateway or something like this and you need to address those uh needs as soon as possible um so yeah the costs it's like pretty much uh, a formula i have formula here which excludes almost everything but it's just again it's um it's when we talk about unit economy it's uh it's a thing that can be explained should be explained very easily but calculated uh as in in as much detail as possible so here we have the formula for costs which is marketing costs minus first cox times buyers plus fixed cox plus cox uh, times orders and uh, those companies components we will uh, explore in details in the next slides so obviously the key track of the cost of goods sold because uh, when you make a sale whether physical or virtual it costs you something because and also it, it is important to keep track how much your first sale costs you because sometimes you can spend more on the first sale to get a user to buy from you or to obtain to purchase something inside your app to um to make them more susceptible for the future purchases and to demonstrate the value of a product 
well, or with a loss or with the profits a little than way little than expected. And of course, you have your fixed uh, costs of goods sold, like uh, usually office rent and uh, salaries and subscription costs, etc. So I mentioned here that the do not include uh, team <laughs> salary, but the those things you you might include because you uh, like th th they are the things that lets you make the sale. Like the, those are the tools you need to to to, to spend on. Um, and also, like it's it's all for the metrics. I understand it was a long section, and here will be the. <laughs> a somewhat short example just to demonstrate to you that on a taxi app that basically calculating a user economy it's a middle school level math here we have like average right you can theorize you can fantasize about the taxi app like i i uh, took an inspiration from a widely used taxi app in united states you go all probably know what I'm talking about. And again, it's a middle school level math, so it shouldn't be really hard. So here we have the uh, average uh, ride price, uh, RPU, average rides per user in one month, service commission, which is very important. Uh, like um, what we charge as a service uh, from the driver, uh, from a user, from a driver, uh, and when they make a ride and you have, we, we have the important metric of our uh, conversion and basically we have our fixed cost, which is roughly $50,000 a month and our unit economy will be as follow. We have to, first of all, calculate our revenue per install and here we go. The, um, we have the average revenue per user because we don't have the free users here, we take this one hundred dollars and uh, multiply it by thirty percent, and uh, obviously we have the um, code and also uh, multiply it by the conversion rate. They have our one point five dollars, and this is where we have our uh, revenue per install. So. We know now if the uh, user installs our app, it's an, an average how much money we will make. And so in order to break even, we need uh, at least 33,000 30, 30, 30, uh, installs per month. So in reality, we need three or four times to keep us afloat, to keep us profit profitable, to shield us from future losses uh, like from the unsuccessful months i guess so again this is the rough estimate not including lcv and cac which can vary from cohort to cohort but i didn't want it to turn this uh, webinar into a math uh, uh i don't know math class middle school math class so here it was about the uh, taxi app. So it, you, you can sometimes you can do it in your mind. Like those kind of calculations could be quite easy. And here you have it. You have the unit economy of a taxi hailing app. And also to wrap it up, uh, to conclude, again, let's reiterate. So introduction, introduction and explanation of a unit economy, always better done in simplest term positive. Possible. On the other hand, uh, the calculation of unit economy should always be as detailed as possible because it, it shows you bottlenecks and points of growth. And uh, needless to say, you have to be flexible. You, you don't have to take just one formula from internet and put it blindly to your use because you most definitely will fail because you, you have to include your own particular set of parameters to the to, to the task at hand to to make it work for your personal case and uh, also if you're a data analyst it's better it's, it's a good advice from from my experience to prepare 
a dashboard with various calculations of different detail levels, like high level for executives with the simplest calculations possible and to analytical to deep uh, segmentations for um, troubleshooting. And um, also, um, um, yeah, so I think, yeah, additional resources, when you can where you can learn it's medium.com websites such as hacker noon and good old youtube so if you you if you put their unit economy there will be like tens of I, I don't know probably tens of hundreds of videos available so yeah and this is the i think it's a qa section so if i have if you have the any questions, I would be happy to answer them, I guess. So, yeah. So I'll stop sharing for a moment just to get, just to hear from you to listen. Oh, yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you for being there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, Andrew, I didn't understand your comment about CPA, CPC. If you can just, if you hear, you can uh, clarify it a bit. So, yeah, Evgeny, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much thank you for being here. So, you, if you have, uh, I don't know, something to add, maybe, or something to discuss, it would be also a nice addition to the topic. And um, also, if there is nothing to uh, to there is no question for you. I would like to add a few more things for myself. Again, when I was preparing this um, for this webinar, I uh, discovered a few articles which is uh, which were which contained the interesting thought about the unit economics. It's like it's about growth. It's about uh, uh, fold increases in your. Um, in your uh, revenues and your profits in, in optimization. So it's usually uh, your growth opportunity. It's, it is where you're most incompetent. So if you're a good designer, but a bad analyst, you should go to uh, like the most growth you can achieve is by improving your analytics and vice versa. So, and that will affect your service, your unit economy and everything else. So yeah, that, that, that's it. Um, yep. So I think no more questions. So again, this last call for questions, if there is no questions, we were bit overdue and I will, um, Thank you again for being here and I will uh, end this, uh, our, our webinar. So yeah, I guess, thank you, bye.